white shark investigation. Great white sharks might be responsible for the majority of attacks on humans. However, there are some brave scientists out there who actually go looking for them. There are a couple of reasons why scientists search for the world's most aggressive predator. Firstly, there is mankind's never-ending curiosity to find out everything about the world we live in. Secondly, many people feel they have to help protect those species which are in need. The process of tagging sharks was made popular when scientists realized it would be cheaper and more productive to tag and track sharks than to risk divers and sharks' lives. This way, the shark only feels a slight prick on its back and can immediately be tracked. There's more than one shark in the area. They're watching each other, they're moving around the boat at different times. Quite often you'll have a larger animal coming up, having a go at the bait. And then after the larger sharks move, move past the boat, then a smaller one might come in behind. They'll tend to avoid direct interactions, but occasionally we see them get so close that uh, you wonder how they avoid bumping into each other at all. We use uh, electronic tags and uh, we dart that into the back of the shark with a, a needle on the end of a tagging pole. So we track the shark to the boat and tag it as it swims alongside the boat. Every tag is different, so we can, when we put it on a shark, we uniquely identify that shark. We then put a series of data loggers or acoustic receivers into the water and they're scattered around Stewart Island and Fovo Strait. The bait, well, it's our main way of getting the shark close enough to tag, really. Um, without it, we're simply reliant on the shark being bold enough to swim right along the side of the boat, and a lot of them aren't. Hey, I think it's actually, I think it's Fred. Do you have any favourite sharks? Uh, well, there's one called Eyebrow that we had up yesterday, and uh, we caught him Eyebrow because he had a nasty gash above his eyebrow the first time we met him last year. And last year he managed to damage both my house and uh, underwater housing for the camera and, and Clint's, and, the, and also hit the camera so hard that it really, really hurt it. So you yeah, put holes, holes in your underwater housing and broke the camera, so least favourite shark. Yeah, Eyebrow's pretty exciting. He's, a, he's a, a character. But I must say, I, I quite like Ella. She's a bit of a star. We've also had a couple of sharks that have broken depth records. Um, Shaq was the first one who went to 1,200 metres. Uh, he dived that deep on his way across to Australia, so out in the middle of the Tasman Sea. Uh, since then, we've had Dave, who exceeded that uh, and went to 1,245 metres, which is a world record for a white shark. So. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting what they get up to. Whenever one of our tag sharks swims by one of those acoustic data loggers, uh, it will detect the presence of the shark, record how long it was there. And since the batteries in these last for a couple of years, we're hopeful of getting records from individual sharks that span two years and include a migration to the tropics away from the zone and back to Stewart Island where we'll pick them up again. We have seen a lot of the same sharks back in the same places time and time again. Nearly all of the white sharks that we've tagged have made migrations to the tropics to the north of New Zealand during winter and spring. Uh, they go to uh, the Great Barrier Reef, New Caledonia, Fiji and Tonga and they travel at pretty good speed. They can uh, do 100 to 120 kilometres a day while crossing the ocean. So they only take a few weeks to cross the Tasman to the Great Barrier Reef or to the north of New Zealand, to the tropical islands up to the north. Yeah. It gives us a life history pattern, I guess, of uh, what sharks have been around here at, the, at, at certain times of the year. And from that, we can start to understand what seasons they're here, when they depart from here, when they come back, which ones are present at the same time, which ones have just gone out of off the radar that we don't know about. And we know from um, elsewhere in the world that uh, there are indications of white shark populations declining as a result of being caught in fishing gear. We suspect that's, uh, that's what's happening here. Um, 
and, and that means that there are, there are species at risk and um, for that reason it's important to try and monitor their populations. Yeah. They're uh, a, an apex predator which uh, is naturally present at quite low numbers in the population. Uh, very important in the marine food chain and uh, as such they play a similar functional role to lions and tigers in Africa and, uh, and Asia. They're just as important to us as our, our uh, famous bird life uh, like the kakapo and the kiwi uh, and we should care for them in the same way.